live from Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome to Connections 50 Plus Wednesday's live show. I am Terry Ann Joseph Brathwaite. And I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph. Good evening, everyone, in Trinidad and Tobago, and of course, the Caribbean islands. Welcome to Connections 50 Plus Wednesdays Live. I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph. And I am Terry Ann Joseph Brathwaite. And today, this evening, what we're going to be speaking about is almost 50. Why almost 50? Because our, this, we are on the 49th show. This is the 49th show of Wednesdays Live. And next week, we are celebrating our 50th show. Could you imagine, Terry Ann? <laughs> and what a ride it has been. We are almost there. The big 5 0 because we are Connections 50 Plus. So we are yes. about to enter our third act stage. Connections 50 Plus is getting there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. So for the month of July, we decided to really celebrate this month of July. So in celebrating, we have done many things. And last week, live, we spoke to you about all the plans we had for July. And we completed most of them. So what we did, we revised, we looked back at our programs and decided, you know what? We need to just review, look at it and rebrand. We did some rebranding of the programs. And yes, one of the programs that we want to chat with you, we did many, but this particular one we're chatting with you about is our prime time reset 5.8G. And we did have a webinar on that in May. So Terry Ann, about that webinar in May, what you thought about that, the response to that webinar? Well, the, the webinar was great. And the thing is that <clears throat> we've been looking at the needs of our 50 plus audience, especially in the context of our three buckets, as we talk about yes. the need to take care of yourself, the need to make sure we have a community and critical, critical underline everything was that need to ensure that we were financially stable throughout the 50 years. And we came up with the reset, the prime time reset program. And we decided the best way to introduce you to it would be to have our webinar. Yes. And uh, at that webinar, we launched and we had a great offer, which many people took. <clears throat> and uh, I mean, having gone through two rounds of that reset with clients, the impact on people's lives have, it, it has really been, what's the best word that I can use? rewarding, validating, <laughs> um, awesome for us as creators of the program. And, and, you know, to see that your mission and purpose comes to life like that and to see people so positively affected, you know. So in our brochure relaunch, the, when, you, when you see our brochures, you will be able to see the descriptor of all the programs. But taking the reset out and representing it to you, we really thought it would be a great idea to do a re reflection as part of our almost yes. <laughs> to do a reflection here today of that reset program. <clears throat> you know, but when people look on, they'll see all of our programs because I know sometimes people ask, so what else do you do? <laughs> right, that's true. Yes. So the new brochures are there, hot off the press. <laughs> Good. And in reflecting, Tarian, we looked at, and, and you know what? We can now, we had two aspects of that. We had two segments. You did, Tarian, that entrepreneurial segment, and I did the life transition coaching segment. And we saw how they both, I mean, it was really connected, connections. We connected so great. And that feedback from the clients is that, you know, they said it was seamless. Yes. 
you yeah. know, and how it was, it was done. So what I would like to share instead of, um, I would like to share that clip mm -hmm. when I spoke at the webinar about what life coaching is all about and the benefits of, you know, doing this life transition coaching, you know, program. So Great. that I would love you all to have a look and then I will come back and share my experience, you know, with the clients, you know, after doing the, that program. Great. As a coach, and when you're talking about the roadmap or you're talking about what tools can be used, I would say it is real. So the frustration, the fears, all that, this is real, right? Um, the first step I would take is really dealing with your mindset because that is important. You cannot move forward or achieve anything positive with a negative mindset. And we know that. But yes, you may say it is very difficult. I can say anything, but the reality is there. But if we don't, guess what? We're going to be stuck. We're going to be more frustrated and we won't be able to move forward. So step one is your mindset, dealing with that mindset. I would say, having dealt with that, and you, you can deal with your mindset in different ways, and of course, you seek professional help if you need to, to move forward and have the, you know, what can be done, the different tools that can, you can use to help you now be more positive moving forward. All right. The second aspect is to check your situation. Be real. Face reality. We can no longer live in that false stage. You may have had money before. Um, things may have been going great in, in your job or in your business, etc. Hey, it's no longer like that. Face the reality of what is happening in your life right now. Okay. What is happening with your family around you? At a meeting, we call a meeting. Let's face reality. You have to take like an inventory. What is happening right now? Okay. So that's the second step. The third step basically would be okay. Then what are the alternatives? What should I do? You know, you cannot sit back and 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 live in that fear that oh gosh, if I go out to work, they may send me back home. No, prepare now, prepare your mind. Yes, you're going to be in a job, but in the event that happens, then what? Do not be afraid to address the, 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 the reality of the situation. You need to know what is happening. Then the next step really is, is start visualizing. You have to just, you know, you must have that faith knowing that things are going to be all right. Because guess what? If you don't believe, that thing's going to be all right, then you go into that panic stage. You're going to be very nervous and anxious, and then nothing's going to be all right. There are solutions. You know, there's a thing that's saying, not a thing, but a saying that there is a solution to every problem. And I really believe that, but you must be ready to deal with it. Okay? And when you do that, then you have to look at, taking action, set out these steps and start taking action. And basically, so in the coaching process, what the transition coach, what I will do is really take you through these steps because I know it's going to be difficult. This is new to, to many, to everybody actually. You are not sure we, I would say we in uncharted waters. So we all need that support to help us through. Yes, Jennifer, that, that really captured the intent of life coaching and why people should do life coaching. You know, so we've been through, we, we've done the process of quite a few people. So Jen, what, what was that process like? What is your reflection on it? I say joy, I, I, it was over joy, pure satisfaction, you know, it was really that feeling of accomplishment. When I, I saw the, the clients, the, the breakthrough, everyone, you, you know, situation is different, 
but the the end results <laughs> the breakthrough i mean it was really really positive the feedback and, and again we would play a clip to, to let you hear for yourself you know from at least one of our our clients um because um the coaching process as i said is a process so clients were able to to follow through moving from within you know they went within to have that clarity of themselves they were able to understand their, their weak areas, where they may have gone wrong, um, what were the gremlins that were keeping them back, um, and really got very excited to, to move forward. They, they were able to visualize, you know, um, see themselves where they would like to be. And, and started even because we had and it was really funny we say okay they had homework which is really going back because it was actually four sessions so after each session clients were able to to go and and put in place so do some more reflections and really when they came back you saw the joy and, and a big smile in their faces saying yes you know, we understood and we feeling much better and we continue that process. So at the final, at by the fourth session, I think everyone was quite happy, you know, about getting that breakthrough and seeing themselves resetting their lives, you know, resetting their lives for the third act stage. So let's hear from, from Holly exactly how she felt about having gone through that process. Great. So here's Holly. Um, at the beginning, I was a bit hesitant because mm -hmm. I wasn't too sure on um, what it would have accomplished for me. Um, but I was very willing to do it, so to speak, because I wanted best for me, right? So that's drew me more so to just get rid of the hesitancy and just venture forward. Really enjoyed how you were able to do it, Jennifer, of really getting me to think, think really deep search, do that real deep search in thinking, um, as well as bring to the forefront the issues that I would say was blinding me, really blinding me and holding me back, you know? To feel, if I draw an example, you know, you have a house or you have anywhere that's filled with a lot of clutter or been, hasn't been cleaned for a while and after you clean it out, the whole place feels lighter. Yes. That's exactly what happened with me. I just started feeling so much lighter. Um, just as light as if I could really just, I could just fly, just fly, you know, and it was like, what's going on with you, girl? Are you for real? <laughs> but yes, um, I have smiley faces on my mirrors in my room. So that is a reminder when I look at myself, you have something to smile about because there is something within you that is just so awesome that is willing to come out. But I'm going to have some fire below me, which really says this girl is on fire. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so. Terry Ann, I loved how Holly ended with this girl's on fire. <laughs> really show that enthusiasm in moving forward. And that really what the life coaching, life transition coaching process. So Terry Ann, and you did that entrepreneurial, you know, process. And listen, I, I mean, sitting in with you, mm -hmm. I learned so much. I went through a process myself. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> I learned that a lot, you know, based on the questions you ask, as you ask them to go deeper within. Mm -hmm. I also went deeper within. Yeah. And yeah. it helped me. And I'm telling you, I'm a better entrepreneur now. <laughs> <laughs> that we work together. So you should also, Tarian, tell us, uh, you know, how you felt about it. Yeah. You know, the thing about entrepreneurship for me and many people, they hear entrepreneurship and they hear business. And they, they, they think, well, I, some people say, I want to do a business when I retire. But they, 
they say it, but they don't really want to because business is associated with work. It's not something that's associated with passion. And one of the things that we do with the reset, this, this side is firmly associated with how do you monetize your value, your skills, how do you continue a stream of income. But you know, just to remind people, Jen, of what we intended to do, let's take a look back at our webinar <clears throat> yes. and see my introduction of what people could expect from the entrepreneurship module, and then we could do some reflections. Okay, so, yes. So once we've set out what you are likely to do, we have to get on the road of let's get this business started. Now, you know, I have a very specific definition of what a business is. And if we are looking at supplementing your income through 50 to 80 years old, then you're looking for something that has to be consistent. It has to be something that you can sustain for a long time. And it has to be something that just by its nature doesn't stress you out. All right. So a business is not a hustle. A hustle, you can drop that and go to something else and think about something else. Once you decide on something that you're going to get into, you are committing for at least three years to at least get that thing going and going at it for five years. Yeah. The first and there is a, a, a book called The Disciplined Entrepreneur. You can go online and get a million models for getting into entrepreneurship. Eh? But entrepreneurship is not golf. It is not a solo sport. So after you get your idea, the first thing you need to find is who can I work with? You need a partner to develop entrepreneurship. You, especially if you're going into entrepreneurship for the first time. Whether that partner is your spouse, a family member, a best friend, someone you met with the same passion and someone that you trust, one of the most important things you will need for going forward with making your, turning your idea into a business is a business partner. Jennifer and I can't, we, we just celebrated our one year of connections, 50 plus, yeah. and our paths turn twist all the way around. And people look at us and they say, wow, look at your social media presence, look at what you're doing and so on. Neither of us could have achieved what we have achieved on our own. Also, Jennifer and I weren't best friends and buddies before. We knew each other socially, but we didn't have a family connection. We didn't have a friend connection. You know, and sometimes you have to be family and friend and so on. What we share is a passion for supporting people moving forward. Jennifer from the coaching area and I from the business development area. And we realize most critically that we have similar values. So therefore we can trust each other. So I use that as an example to show you that that business partner doesn't necessarily have to be the person you know since you were a child because you could trust them or you know them or the family yeah. member. The reason that you need to have a person with you is that the world of entrepreneurship is a very, it's like the stock market nowadays. And so, you know, the curve will go like this. And what's most important is that you need to have someone to, to have each other's back, to bounce ideas off of, and to think through things. And sometimes your family or your friends, out of knowing you too well and too much, may be either too optimistic or too pessimistic. They may want to save you from yourself. And sometimes you face things that are huge risks like half of my severance package because we've got to set up a kitchen or you're spending so much time in this. What about the children? What about the family? So you have to have a partner who understands your idea, understands your passion, has your energy and is aligned with you with values to move on. So Jen, we 
we had that plan and we went through the process. And what was the most revealing thing in terms of the entrepreneurship, just like coaching, is how personal it is. How do I monetize my skill? What do I choose to do for my third act stage? What is my relationship with money and what role does money play in my life? And now that I don't have my job or my constant income or my pension is not enough, if I don't understand what the business relationship with money is, what's my relationship with money, then I might set up my business totally wrong. And it, what, what always gives me a great amount of pleasure is seeing people go through our process. Now, everybody went through the same process and will ask the yeah. same questions, but their answers all took them down different paths. And I think, Jennifer, what made the entrepreneurship module so much more powerful it's because it flowed right after they got the breakthroughs and the vision in with their life transition so they were able to be, to shed the second act yes. silos so i was a human resource professional so in my third act i must do something with human resource i was a uh, 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 homemaker. So in my third act, I have no commercial skills. I can't do anything. And because they got the breakthroughs in the life transition, and we then went into, okay, what are your skills? What is your passion? Yes. What do you like to do? How much money do you have? What role should money play in your life? people realize that entrepreneurship is really a system and a method of organizing and that you're in complete control of how intense it is, how big it is, how fast it is, and that you really have a chance to shape this according to how you want your life. And I think the reset, <laughs> You know, it, it, it's almost as though they, they, they started with one dimension and then they went through the life coaching and then they came to another dimension and then they went through a whole other life coaching. Yes. And at the end of it, you, you really saw people reset for their prime time yes. because they were clear about the direction their life should take. Uh -huh. And on top of that, they were clear about how they would carry out their passion or their skill or their interest in a way that suited them. Oh, well, yes. And didn't suit the other. So it really, really was, I think, a fantastic experience, both for me as a facilitator, yeah. but I think more significantly for the clients as they went through their journey. And I think we've got a couple of clips that yes. can explain that better than I can even think of explaining. So here, viewers, you can look at what people, you and me, just like you, thought about the experience of doing the entrepreneurial aspect of the reset. And remember, all of their experiences are impacted by what would have happened before during the life transition. So you're really getting a, a heightened um, yes. reset. Okay. So Holly, Holly, when you when you started this process, mm -hmm. what did you expect versus what you received in terms of the process that we used? Um, I didn't put too many, too much expectations, um, but I know that I recognize that there was a need for improvement and somehow or the other, I probably needed that little fire underneath my behind to <laughs> light me up. So in a sense, that's what I would have expected. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that I can just 
get skyrocketed out of the the ground where I was and shoot up to where I need to go. All right. It's very tense, I must say, at times. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, I'm glad because it now tells me that I was really working up myself to get to where I need to be and to achieve the goals that I need for my business. I needed to take up those leadership styles that you pointed out to me in order for me to get that growth that I would like to have. So I look forward to taking all your points, all your suggestions, all your critics, and putting them in gear for a better jumpstart child care services, which is going to be well recognized. Um, my service is going to be more top of the line than, than it is right now, but more so recognized, um, not only in my community, in my area, but outside externally. I want to be able to see that, okay, because of this, I am now networking with no fears, um, no worries. I'm not staying in the background and staying behind everybody else, but I'm stepping boldly forward and doing what is necessary for Jumps are childcare services. And I know a lot of small businesses like yourself um, probably fear introspection. Mm -hmm. Do you think a process like this, how, how important is it for people with, with Fears, yes. micro businesses and small businesses? I could talk for myself, but yes, many small businesses are afraid to take a lot of risk for fear of the fact that okay i don't have much and i don't want to lose the little bit that i have but at the end of the day i realize that you need to do that you need to take that um risk you need to really set yourself up to see how far you can go or where you can reach um so introspect in, in retrospect i am happy and I would recommend anyone to not do like me and hold yourself back because of this um, and what the outcome may be. It's just better to just put your foot out and see where it leads you. And if it doesn't work out, you mean you still find other ways to, to get back up and move again. You know, and that is something I have recognized many times with my business in that I have fallen. And um, because of my passion, I believe, for what I want to do, I didn't let that keep me down for too long. Um, financially, one always would wonder if one should spend or take that amount of money that they may have saved and move forward. Um, and I would say, no, yes, yes. Let it, let it work for you, whatever means do courses like this, do sessions like this. Um, any, any, any development of organizations that can assist, if it is you have to do, take that, take that risk, take that money, spend it there, and see how far you could go with the rest of it. With so you have now reached the end of your entrepreneurship reset, having done the life transition reset. So tell us, what has this journey been like? Oh, it's been disturbing. <laughs> if we could put a one word to it. But to recognize your reality is an important part of growing up. And I wouldn't say growing old, growing up. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, and growing up in order to take responsibility for self. And that word self is a great part of the journey that you recognize that you have your two feet, full stop. And you really, no matter where you are, what you're doing, have to depend on yourself. Mm -hmm. And tell me about the process we've used. What was it like for you to go through the process? 
difficult? Was it worthwhile? Yes, it was difficult. I noticed my word to start off with was disturbing. Okay. So that what happened to them, boy? They mad. You know? But uh, of course, afterwards, the questions and the finding out about your own financial situation. You're supposed to know that, right? Yeah. But then when you start to put the details in, you start to pull back and say, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. so yes, disturbing, but worthwhile is not the word. More important than that. Um, because without it, where am I going to be in the next three to four years? Okay. Still floundering around, still expecting that, you know, everything is anything. And do do anything is not anything these days. Hmm? So that yes, and I was saying earlier, I hope that you all have a lot of people recognizing that this is worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And certainly, I will encourage people to do it. And for their own selves, for their own sense of well-being, sense of hope in the future. Okay. And COVID helped that too. Eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I was sure about one or two things. One of them was that I had given both of you the license to work with me. I was sure about that. The other thing was that I was sure that both of you had the ability to do so, to take me from wherever you thought I was, to take me on to certainly a place where I would, you know, achieve my full potential. And certainly if it meant that I would get into some business, some entrepreneurial activity, which was what this was geared to, you were capable of doing it. Um, last week was such a really powerful, and power, the word power came up, really powerful session in that as I was made to explore my feelings about money and, and all of that and what I would use it for. And what I didn't seem to put at all was this whole idea of power and status. And as Jennifer, you know, would have stated some time after, we have a very bad opinion of money. We grew up that way. So we have been schooled into believing that money is bad, status is bad, power, you know, that kind of thing. But um, Terry Ann, as Terry Ann explained that, I was able to connect with something I would tell my students, and I always tell them that, um, you know, I can't, I, I've never seen a weak person pulling someone up the hill. And it meant that I was displaying some measure of power there. I had to be strong to be able to pull them up. And I realized that what Terry Ann was, was saying about, about power was clean. It, it was clean, it was full of integrity. It, it, it was something that I possessed without actually recognizing recognizing that so we finished off rarely at a higher at a higher place than we had done previously yeah. and i really appreciate what you all were able to do and as i look back i say you know well, that was me and i look at myself like oh 
there's me then, you know? So, you know, those are things really that um, I'm thankful for. I'm really appreciative of the process because I think because of the fact that I'm visual, process means a lot to me. So anything that's missing there, I am at the loss. Something needs to go there. Something I need to fill this before. Yeah, no. So, well, there was process and, and a meaningful process. And, and you, you know, I could relate to it and, 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 and all of that. And I think anybody, whether you're a visual learner or not, you know, what, you, what both of you offered was one, a, 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 and a sense of security a sense of um, comfort where people felt comfortably enough to share and also knowing that what was shared would be would would be treated with the utmost confidence and everything else so all of those things were there and i'm saying i hope that many other people would avail themselves of the opportunity. It was the professionalism that you all brought to it. You know, the expertise. We've been talking about expertise and so on, the expertise that you all brought to it as well. And th th that togetherness, there was that gelling, you know, and because both of you gelled so well, both of you together, gelling together, gelled with, with, with with, 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 with the participants, you know. Terry Ann, really. Um, I can't, you see the joy in my smile every time I recall, no, every time I recall that the Reset Program and working with our clients, I mean, it really, really made me happy. But you, that, this program that we designed, we ensure that, listen, it's not just us, chatting with the clients is so, but prior to chatting, we included the assessments. We did the light transition assessments and we did the assessments for entrepreneurship. And that, those assessments made such a difference. Jennifer, you know, the, these assessments are so powerful. And I think that is what makes our program so different definitely you know and sometimes people ask what what are these assessments about yes. and i remember one one person who was um thinking about coming on to the program telling me i've done all kinds of assessments in my professional career i know who i am and myself but our assessments are tailored for people in the third act stage and jennifer i want to go back to our session with Dr. Nika Joseph, who designed and customized those assessments for what the, for this reset yes. program. And I want her to explain to us, to explain to everyone here why we do assessments. So listen to this. But are there things that people if if you've been working for 30 years, 40 years, people believe that what I did is what I know. And how are there tools to help people figure out themselves? Because I think that's a tall task. Yes. So you need to remember who I was before I would. <laughs> that's taking me back to when I was 20. <laughs> <laughs> so some of us have very clear definitions of who we are and we are sticking to it no matter what. And some of us are going through the different stages. Um, so there are tools, there are different um questions questionnaires mm -hmm. and ways in which you can that challenge or actually get you to think about yourself yes what are your preferences what are your interests what are your likes mm -hmm. so there are tools that will give you a long list and you can rate them on a one to five or you could select or you could check boxes that will go through that process with you and give you a report that says look these are the things that um that you truly like, like. Yeah. or things that you really wanted to try. 
Because um, they do it on Facebook all the time. Yes. So Facebook has all these <laughs> all, all, all kind of versions, okay. right? This is what you do. Like. do everything, this is right? Um, so there's all types of um, Assessment. assessments that yes. exist. But beyond, so they are, so you can do very formal assessments mm. with someone like myself and we can sit and we can go through yes. really formally how you proceed. And that's for persons who are really like, I just don't know. <laughs> I am sure everybody remembers that show where Nick and Jennifer, that was the show where you left me alone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was the feedback was fantastic <laughs> from it. Definitely. You know, but now we, we really understand why assessments are needed because we at 50 are not the same person at 20 or the person who was at work. So, you know, Jen, at the end, at the start of each session, people did their assessment. What was that like for you working with people and the assessment as a coach? As a life coach using a, a customized assessment for this, you, you know, for the 50 plus group, it had it showed clients, you know, they you saw the 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 surprise in their faces, then they said, Wow, I'm really feeling like that, you know, because what the assessment did is help them to to recognize their I'm saying weak areas, but the areas they need to work on. The areas it pointed out the areas that had them stuck without they even recognizing that. You know, we were able to go through each step because they had about what, five different headings under which you could have um, say whether they are innovative, why, you, you know, the different areas that would really make someone a success at what they want to be, a success in life, because I, think, I dealt with the life transition. And I think, yeah, uh, having people be in this crying as explorers, adventurers, continuous <laughs> relaxers, I think it, it, it really yes. was a different dimension in it, terms it of who you are in life and where you want to go. It did. It helped me also as a coach. It definitely guided me in terms of how to probe. Because prior to not, not using an assessment, you go by your experience and, and your feeling and, and you just, you know, you go along. Now that is not a successful method. But I'm telling you, having that assessment really helped in guiding and the probing of questions. Because what was great is that you also, you know, I had a coach's, she, she, there are two aspects, one for the client and one actually for the coach. So with my report, I am telling you, I was able to read prior to meeting the client to have a better understanding of how I can guide that client, um, the type of questions to ask. And at the end of it all, we... It definitely would. I don't know if I can go back to doing a, <laughs> a coaching with a client without an assessment. Seriously. You know, and, and a customized assessment. Exactly. You know, and for myself, using the assessments, when you talk about you know, um, entrepreneurship, mm. people have ideas, as, as I said before, and as we showed, as what yes. entrepreneurship is. And people have ideas of what are the traits of an entrepreneur. And people box those traits into something positive or something negative. Not realizing like interpersonal skills has two dimensions. It has the dimensions of um, conviviality and networking. It, it has the issue of in initiative that, oh, I have ideas, I can do things. Yes. But initiative has another dimension. It has a dimension of, yes, you can come up with the ideas, but what about your approach to risk? Um, innovation, which was another element that we tested on. Yes, it, people, people confuse the two, initiative and innovation. Innovation is really how you do things and your industriousness. And, you know, the issue of drive for excellence, 
you know, yes, I ha could have the standard, but how consistent, consistent am I in applying those standards? And it all ties back into how I feel. And then the crown and glory, this coping with pressure business, you know? And I think what was great about the assessments for helping people to shape their, the type of entrepreneur they would be, whether it's a for-profit entrepreneur or not for profit entrepreneur, is that because they were able to see the two dimensions, the number of the score didn't matter whether yes. you got a high score or a low score, what the assessment did is it helps you to place in your mind what would be the best way for me to approach this. And very often we have programs where people say, go down the road, do this, do that. But they don't really get into you and who you are to help you understand this is how I will approach it. And that I think just as you did with the life coaching and people were, when I say people, I'm a continual, that means something bad. No, it's not bad. Yeah. It's just your approach to life. And when people saw that, you know, it's like they would say, I'm okay. Yes. I'm okay as I am. They were so much more receptive to opening up and, and exploring whatever was required. And it really, really made a difference. I yeah. am so hooked on the assessments. And we've got some people to talk about what those assessments meant to them right now. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one would have thought that you could not be so transparent, but she did a good job. She really was able to assess me, especially since even though I have read it for the first time, I was like, I don't think so. That's not me. But again, when you help me identify what exactly the underlining meaning of everything was, I came to realize, yes, you know, when you were able to prove and get in to my head and I was able to really get my thoughts and everything out, I'd be like, yes, for real. I know as I say, 100% agreed totally. So those assessments were on point. They were on point. Yes. Excellent. At least that was, to me, that was like a, um, a breakthrough for you to understand me and help yes. me understand myself. Yes. The assessment is very important because once again, I will say, you think you know yourself and you've lived with this person for whatever, how much years, 50 years, 70 years, whatever. But your perspective changes imperceptibly and you don't recognize it. Okay. Hello? Most likely to succeed. Look at here. Okay. Can do this. Jumping headlong. <laughs> Running. Hey, yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. But I'm recognizing that I'm pulling back. Or I have pulled back to a certain extent. Okay. I remember my father said many years ago, he started a Amway business, Amway. Network marketing. Mm -hmm. Right. And when I said to him, I am not joining his pyramid scheme, the pullback, he pulled back and said, but of all my children, I expect you would be the one who in front. And that is true. I am out there, man, da, 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 jumping headlong, first man. But that is no longer so. And maybe that's a good thing. Because sometimes when you jump headlong, <laughs> you break your foot. <laughs> At least you pull back and you look to see where you're jumping, which is what this, this is also doing for me, Thanks. recognizing that kind of thing about myself. Mm -hmm. and therefore learning to deal with the new me. The assessments um, allows me to go in. Because I had to go into myself to answer 
not what I think the assessor would want, but what it is about me, what it is me that uh, what is the best answer for this, for this, for that, and, that. and I was able to do that. And of course, you had the um, the assessment that was compiled and produced, and based on that, you know, Jennifer discussed it and showed how this is applying to me, what I think about it and so on. So I was, even though I had, when it was reviewing inverted commas of the assessment that was taking place, um, I was, I was, I was in it. I was in it. So I'm going to say, yes, I wrote this. This is what I said. And this generated this percentage or something like that, and and so on. Was, yeah, but you know that was really you go yeah, that really me boy yeah yeah <laughs> yes you know. And I've seen that, and then we all know that assessments could have a, a, a bit of error, but I would say. I I made I made out myself there you know in that, and then we mo we moved on and and that then so took us to the entrepreneurial. We had that that we had to do, right? A different kind of a kind of a kind of assessment because I think it's asking for if for you to look at different skills that you have and so on and everything else. And I think all that would be necessary for you as an entrepreneur, you know, and to look at the pluses and the minuses. What do you have? What you what you would need and so on and those two um, assessments were useful then for you, the, the, um, the facilitators, to see how to manage my strengths, how to manage the limited resources, the limited assets that I would have had. How do you ask the questions when to ask those questions, what kind of questions would you ask? What are the follow-up questions that you would ask during it? That would, that, that, that would definitely be probing questions that would help you to have a better understanding of me, you know, and also to get me to move beyond just the, just the basic thing. Because I, I remember one point being advised or being reminded that, you know, you have a lot of linguistic competence. Let's hear you use the language instead of, um, you know, yes, go beyond and pull out some words there and be specific. <laughs> and really, I mean, that was, that was useful because it is easy to say it was great. And uh, I mean, if I say it's great, I mean, well, one better than great. But when you, when, when you, uh, then I stop thinking about, well, okay, well, what is great now? Well, what I mean, what is great, really? And I had to dissect and deconstruct everything, you know, to arrive at a good understanding of, of, of what you're asking, asking of me. And really, through it all, I think there was that integrity that was maintained, you know, you didn't feel well. Oh God, what, what, well, the answer to that must have song so bad, you know, really, I really shouldn't say that. No, there, at no point did I feel that, you know, I, I, I was clear about the process, 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 and what, and the questioning, the probing, leading to a better, for me to understand, I sound you, both of you to understand. And, well, I think today, today, you know, was the max, you know, we maxed out, we maxed out the thing, yes, we maxed out, me say like the young people, we maxed out the thing, man, you know, so it was really, really very powerful. Assessments, Jennifer, really made a difference to our reset participants, didn't they? Uh, yes, followers, you just heard that testimony, those testimonies, definitely that's the way to go. So I'm so happy, Terry Ann, that we can offer a customized, you know, assessment for our programs. 
Yes. yes. So they will set us here again. For most of the this is ah, yes. that is going forward with lots of stuff. <laughs> of course. Uh, so the reset, the prime time reset is here again for you all. And definitely, we would love you to revisit our webinar. Revisit the webinar that was in May, where we spoke about the reset. You know, follow us. We have the programs on. We have the programs now on with the brochures. So you look in, you check these programs, and let us see on which one you're interested in. So to find out more information about the reset and other our other programs please just go to the brochure or you just inbox us or register online. And Jennifer, don't forget, we have a promotion going on until the end of uh, July. Oh, where yes. If you want to have a short chat with either of us, you call it, send an inbox, ask a question, and you'll get a little private Zoom with us. So please look for that promotion. And, and I am excited. I'm inter I'm really excited to chat with you all. Yeah. Once you go through the brochures, you see what all that we do. Anything you want to talk about based on those programs, hey, inbox us. And who knows, you could be selected for a one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> what else is there going on, Jennifer? Yeah, we have some more fantastic news for this July. Next week, remember we said this is 49th show? Next week will be our 50th show. And we are doing something special. Did we mention? What's special up or That 50. I think we need, it's not just 50 shows. It's the 50th consecutive show. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, oh gosh. It's not yes, just yes. 50. <laughs> it's 50 consecutive, including Christmas and New Year's. <laughs> And uh, we are launching big to celebrate this. We're going to be launching Fix Up 5.8G. Andy Gael? Come on, 50 Plus Tribe. Connections 50 Plus is coming to the Gael with our Fix Up 5.8G, a weekly magazine show on Monday, 20th July from 6 to 7 p.m. Get ready to go on the third act stage. It's all about our money, our lifestyle, our well-being, our self-care, and about our community. Let's fix up. Don't forget, you can call in live to talk to us. We really want to hear from you. Fix up 5.8G. Let's fix up. You see, last week we told you, <laughs> we've been telling you, all kinds of things are happening. So now, Caribbean world, international world, we not only are going to be here talking to you every Wednesday as usual, you have a chance to look at our new brochures at all of our programs. You can inbox with a question. You can get a one-on-one -on -one with us and wow we are now with a live magazine show on the guys yes. giving you the opportunity to call in and chat with us and chat with our guests on the show yes Listen, jennifer i feel like our facebook caribbean audience is a little it's family and yes. i think we can have private conversations with the family and I think they can get a little backstory for this fix yes. up. Let me tell you something. We have been talking about reset <laughs> and oh, yes. in your life. And Jennifer and I, in doing connections with the plus, we've reset. But you see, to prepare for fix up, <laughs> a live calling magazine show, we've been going through our own reset. Oh, yes. I'm a creative director. We have a, tech, a production, a technical director. And Jen and I, we have a glam squad. So you all <laughs> need, to, we get in fix up. <laughs> we really get in fix up. But everyone needs to find a way. Tune into Gael, the Caribbean. Um, you could look for it on your, your cable listings. 
If you don't, it will be streamed on Facebook. Oh, yes. You will be able to call in to the call in segment because you would have, um, there's a, 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 if you're using Flow, the number will be free and there's a WhatsApp number. But best of all, you'll be able to see Jennifer and my reset fix up. <laughs> Definitely. It is you a know? wild ride. <laughs> yes, there are, it's a lot to look forward to, a lot of activities in July, you know, for you to come on board with us. Definitely. Yeah. We are doing what we say. Hey, listen, this is Connections. We are the 5.8G generation. We are talented. We're full of life, full of energy, and we're coming along. We're doing it in our style and our way. Yes. So everybody, you've got an opportunity to reset again, uh -huh. determine the direction of your life and how you want to monetize your skills going forward. And then live on the IL, we fix it up. Yes. <laughs> With you so in mind. we all about you to enjoy a third act stage. <laughs> so until next Wednesday for the Facebook primetime live and everybody be on la be on the gael whether you're doing it on tv or via the facebook stream yes. on monday from 6 to 7 p.m and see jennifer and my debut <laughs> fixed up <laughs> and that's next monday the 20th right the 20th, yes. yes and every monday after that which repeats on thursday at noon <laughs> Okay, so, so that's it. Okay, bye. All right, see you Monday. <laughs>